Hi, I'm Kerry Grinkmeyer. I'm um, the host of Best of Us Investors. I used to have a million dollar portfolio that I shared with my tribe, Best of Us Investors. They meet at bestofusinvestors.com and we have a Discord. And I shared my portfolio, but I don't have it anymore. Uh, I have about a $860,000 portfolio. It had been down into the 750s, but it's up a bit. But um, am I worried about it? Am I concerned about it? I'm concerned about it. It bothers me some, but I'm a long-term investor. And so I recognize that uh, I'm maybe a little ahead of the game. And as a result of that, I'm getting a lot of people who are pretty much throwing stones at me, telling me that some of the stocks I recommended, particularly edits, uh, is down 43%. At least that's what I'm down on it. I used to be up maybe uh, about 20%, but it's down 43%. Why is that? Why is it that uh, the heaviness that I have in biotech, 3D printing, and robotics, which represents uh, probably about 40% of my portfolio, why am I not doing well on it today? Well, that's what I want to discuss in this, um, in this video and share some of the knowledge that I have and some of the research that I'm doing that makes me comfortable with where I'm at. I know a lot of you aren't but you don't have the experience. I've been in I've been in this business for many years. I've seen the dot com bubble, I've seen the subprime crisis and and now I think I'm seeing the SPAC crisis. But let's talk about it and let's make you a little bit more comfortable with me being down uh 14 15% in my portfolio. I'll be right back with you. Best of us investors presents Kerry Griegmeier. Right now, I'm I, I, I'm a reader. Uh, I like to read and get an idea of what's happening uh, or what's going to happen in the world and then structure my portfolio accordingly. I believe that uh, our, our economy, our stock market, everything is driven by events. And when those events occur, you need to interpret them such that you can anticipate what companies are going to benefit from those events. Events like the World War II, um, events like the invention of the computer, the uh, invention and implementation of the internet, the um, invention and implementation of the cell phone as we know it today, uh, the mobile phone, social media. If you would have anticipated those events and then bought the stocks in them, you would have done extremely well. I did a video just uh, the other week where where I actually showed you what it would have, what if you would have anticipated Apple 40 years ago, what you would have today. If, if you would have anticipated Bitcoin just 11 years ago, what you would have today. Well, what I'm trying to do is to anticipate those events of the future. And I think the biggest event of my lifetime just happened uh, a year ago, March, and that was the pandem pandemic crisis. And that's what pushed me to biotech. So right now I'm, I'm reading this book, um, the, the Code Breaker. It's about Jennifer Downa, and it's written by um, Walter Isaacson. And it goes through her invention of CRISPR. And I am of the belief that CRISPR is is going to change the world in more drastic terms than than even the internet. Walter Isaacson made the statement on uh, 60 Minutes that it it is I believe he said 10 times bigger than um, social marketing or or digital marketing or the internet. Uh, 10 times bigger than that because as he said it affects our life. But I want you to meet Jennifer. I've gotten to know her quite well off of this book, um, but I found uh, an interview with her that I'd like you to meet her and let her tell you some of the things that she's concerned about and some of the things she says happening as a result of her invention 
of CRISPR. So watch this. Gene editing technology is a tool that scientists can use to change the letters of DNA in cells in precise ways. So I like to use the analogy of a, a word processor on, on our computer. So we have a document, you can think about the DNA in a cell like the text of a document that has the instructions to uh, tell the cell how to grow and divide and become a brain cell or a liver cell or develop into an entire organism. And and it, just like in a document, uh, the CRISPR technology gives scientists a way to go in and edit the letters of DNA, just like we might cut and paste uh, text in our in our document or uh, replace whole sentences, even, even whole paragraphs or chapters. We can now do that uh, using the CRISPR technology in the DNA of cells. Okay, so I hope that gave you some basic understanding about what CRISPR is and how it kind of compares to your cut and paste of your on your computer. But now I'd like, Jennifer, to give you some practical applications of it so that you can kind of perceive, okay, where are they going with this? When and how is it going to, as an investor, how can I invest in it such that I can benefit? And, it, and again, it may not be this year, next week, next month, it may be five years from now. Again, think of it like the, the apple of 40 years ago. Think of it as the Bitcoin of 11 years ago. Okay, let, let's let Jennifer explain a little further. In uh, clinical medicine, the opportunity to make changes to blood cells that would cure diseases like sickle cell anemia, a disease where uh, you know we've understood the genetic cause for a long time, but until now there hasn't been a way to actually uh, think about treating patients. And now with this technology, it's possible in principle to remove stem cells that give rise to blood cells in a person's body, make edits to those cells that would correct the mutation causing uh, sickle cell disease, and then replace those cells to essentially give a patient a new set of cells that don't have the defect. It's one thing to talk about being able to remove mutations from the, the human population that cause genetic disease, and I think for many people that would be a desirable thing to do. On the other hand, it's very, I think it's a very different, uh, different uh, discussion to think about uh, using a technology like this to create uh, enhanced human beings, people that are taller or have a certain eye color or, or other kinds of physical or, or intellectual traits that might be considered desirable. Um, and, uh, you know, it sort of immediately brings up uh, 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 sort of the, the whole area of eugenics and, and uh, sort of access to technology, who gets access, who pays for it, who decides, who decides uh, whether or not to, to do such a thing. Should companies be allowed to offer this as a service to parents who want to do this? And, you know, if so, should they be regulated in some way? I, it's a, there's a lot of very interesting and challenging questions, I think, that go along with that. Okay, I think that might give you a different perspective as to really the magnitude of what CRISPR and what the, the therapies that are going to evolve from CRISPR are, are going to produce. And I think you might see that there, there are some problems that could potentially go around it, and there's some heavy discussion. But I want you to, if, if you're old enough to remember, there, these kind of naysayers or uh, comments and criticisms of what is the, going to be effect of this and what are the negatives to it and how are we going to regulate it and how is it going to affect our lives and is it going to be discriminatory, they all occurred with the invention of the computer. They even occurred even more in more depth than the uh, with the uh, invention of the the internet, and then look around right now in the the talk about privacy and discrimination um, through social media, and 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 so these questions are not going to stop it. It may put different direction to it. Uh, it may hold it up some, but. I think the reality is that CRISPR is going to change our world. 
and it's going to change particularly the deliverance of medicine. And CRISPR alone, and think of it as CRISPR as being the internet, and then edits and um, Illumina and Invade being the 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 apples and the 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 Amazons, the deliverers of the internet. Okay, but change the word internet to CRISPR. Uh, and, and I think you'll, you'll get an understanding of the magnitude of this. Again, I want to emphasize, it isn't going to happen overnight. Uh, I think it's, it's, it's interesting to me that as I've read this book, I've realized that CRISPR is the reason why we have a vaccine as quickly as we do after the pandemic was discovered. You, you're going to hear a lot of people saying uh, in, in the past, it would have taken years to come up with a, a vaccine. Well, CRISPR is what made this vaccine uh, possible as quick it is, as it is. It's covered in this book, but I don't think I have ever heard anybody on, on TV or uh, connect those two dots. And I, I'm not sure why. I'm not sure why, but I suspect it has to do with the, if it can do that, what else can it do? And what are the ramifications of that? There's going to be a lot of fear around this. Uh, uh, Jennifer alluded to the, the fact that CRISPR could be something that could provide people the ability to engineer their children. Uh, much as we have used this technology, actually, to engineer uh, animals and, and, and food products, um, we are now approaching the point where we can engineer people and we have to settle the, the, the issues with that. I don't think anybody would have a problem if all it did was take disease out of our lives. And then we the other thing we're going to have is what are the un unintended consequences of removing um, cancer from my body? What else might it do? Might it have some negative effect? These are all things that are going to have to be worked out. And, and again, much as we're trying to work through how Facebook is affecting our world, how Google is affecting our world, we're going to have to work through those things. But as an investor, you need to recognize this is one of the biggest investment opportunities in your life. All you've got to do is figure out who are the companies who are going to bring it to us in the format that we're comfortable with it. That's why I'm okay that I'm down. I'm down 160,000 or some number of that. Uh, but I'm comfortable that I have recognized what's going to happen next. I have also recognized that uh, our supply chain is broken. I'm watching our federal government create a infrastructure package that is, mm, I would say, just shadowingly disguised as we got to take back the man, bring back the manufacturing. And, and I'm using Donald Trump words, bring the manufacturing back to the United States. Donald recognized it as an economic issue. I'm recognizing it. And I think the world is recognizing it as a security issue. We cannot be dependent upon a foreign country who maybe wants to replace us as the economic power of the world uh, for everything we need, for, for the semiconductors and, and that have caused General Motors to shut down, Ford to shut down, uh, the, the, the lack of a PPP when we needed it as this virus was taking over our country, uh, the lack of the pharmaceuticals that 76% are made in China. That can't happen anymore. And as an investor, if I recognize it and position my portfolio properly with robotics and 3D printing, 
I'm going to benefit. And again, it won't be today. It won't be today. And I'm in a unique position. I do not need this money. I have other forms of income. I have created, an, and, and I, this is what I truly challenge you to do. Use the internet. Use use digital media to create other forms of income. So you're not dependent on that nine to five job and you're not dependent on your stock portfolio. Your stock portfolio should be something that you use to create wealth in the future. Thus, you don't have to play the day-to-day -day game of is it a red day or a, or, or a green day. You don't have to play that game. Get out of it and read this book and you will learn to ad admire Jennifer and understand DNA sequencing and RNA sequencing. And you will become, a, trust me, this is true, you will become the smartest guy in the room. And once you're the smartest guy in the room, you control the game. And that's what we're doing. We're in a game called investing. So, if you like this kind of video, if this helps you feel more comfortable with the situation you currently find yourself in, hit the subscribe button, ring the bell so you're notified when uh, I have other videos, give me a thumbs up, and then go down into the comments and express your mind. It, it, some of you, you know, to share your knowledge. And when I say share your knowledge, go to bestofusinvestors.com, find where it says sign up for to, to get a link to our Discord, and then come and share your knowledge. Tell me about the books that you're reading that are giving you insights into the future that are going to make you wealthy. Share that with me and share that with the rest of the world, and the rest of the world will share it with you. The internet has given us an opportunity to come together, to create a sharing economy and share our knowledge so that we, as a collective group, can become the smartest group in the room and we make good investment decisions, we learn our tax code so that we keep more than what we make, and we, like the Kennedys and the Rockefellers and the Carnegies, create family wealth so that we can make a difference in the people that come behind us. This is huge. Read it, understand it, and you're going to benefit from it. Thanks. See you tomorrow.